One of the most common questions I get asked is how I get this rich, beautiful wood grain. And to be honest, sometimes it's a stain, sometimes it's just the natural wood. It really just depends on the piece and the look that I'm going for. I use gel stains, I use penetrating stains, and there are differences between them, both in terms of the product itself and how the wood accepts it. But sometimes the wood is still in good enough condition that I can just apply a top coat and different top coats have different properties. I'm going to show you my six favorite stains and six favorite top coats. Here we go. My name is Angie and I'm the one behind Transcend Furniture Gallery. It's my mission to keep as many pieces of furniture as possible out of landfills. Sometimes I paint, sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while. I've got three maple panels here and a panel of walnut veneer. I'm just sectioning these off with painter's tape so that I can do multiple treatments on the same board just so I'm not wasting anything. Now the reason I have two different types of wood is because stain is going to absorb differently on different types of wood and it's going to affect the color differently. So you can have the same stain on maple and walnut and it could look completely different and you're going to see that here shortly. I am also showing you my six favorite top coats here, but the main reason I'm doing it now is just to show you how it can affect the color of the natural wood. I have another video coming out shortly where I'm actually going to be testing the durability of these. I've seen other videos like this, but it never seemed to be any of the products I use, so I'm doing my own version. These are what I use the most, and I just thought I would share it with you. These General Finishes gel stains are my absolute favorite. I've got Antique Walnut, Candlelight, and Nutmeg. These are the Penetrating Stains I'm going to show you by Minwax. We've got English Chestnut, Special Walnut, and Dark Walnut. Okay, I've got everything labeled here on both the maple and the walnut. We're going to be starting with the stains first and then I will show you the top coats later. The panels I'm using for the top coats are the same ones you'll see in the next video where I actually do some fun tests on the products like scratch tests, water resistance, that sort of thing. Penetrating stain is oil based, it's very liquidy and you have to stir it really well because a lot of times the pigments will settle to the bottom so you just want to make sure that you mix those up well before you start to use it. You can apply it with a foam brush, paint brush or stain brush or cloth. I'm just using a cloth here and that works just fine for me. With penetrating stain it literally does what it says. It penetrates right into the wood grain versus the gel stains which sort of sit on top but I'll talk about that in a second. These are the three colors I use the most. I have many, many stains by Minwax that I use, but these seem to be the ones I gravitate to the most. The top is English Chestnut, which is a nice reddish warm color. Special Walnut is the one in the middle, and then Dark Walnut here on the bottom. Now you can let these stains sit for up to 15 minutes before you wipe it off. Obviously the longer that it sits in the wood, the darker your stain is going to be. Just for consistency, I'm wiping all of these off at exactly five minutes just to make things easier to compare. Okay, here's where things get interesting. These are the exact same colors, I just have the maple panel sitting on top of the walnut panel. But you'll see that even before I wipe it off, it's, it looks like a completely different color. <laughs> all of these do, and obviously it's because the wood is lighter, it's maple. But the thing about maple and some other hardwoods like birch, um, they don't absorb stain all that well. So if you're using a penetrating stain, I always recommend using a wood conditioner. I didn't here just so that I could show you kind of what happens when you don't use one. It tends to be a little bit blotchy and just doesn't absorb very well. A wood conditioner prior to staining will definitely help with that. Obviously maple is still going to be lighter than something like walnut or cherry or mahogany, but at least with the wood conditioner you can sort of prevent this blotchiness. This is gel stain. It's a lot thicker. It's almost like pudding. <laughs> Chocolate pudding. <laughs> Snacks. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Gel stain feels completely different when you're applying it. Um, penetrating stain, like I said, penetrates into the wood. Gel stain tends to sit more on the surface. It's also oil-based. I like gel stains for numerous reasons. I just love how it feels when it's going on. It's very 
smooth and you usually don't have to worry about the blotchiness as much. You'll see here, again, the maple is going to be lighter, but you're not getting that weird blotchiness that we were getting with the penetrating stain on the maple side, which is the one on the right here. Gel stain generally doesn't need to sit as long as penetrating stain does. I wiped all of these off after about three minutes or so. You don't want it to dry on the wood. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you wipe it off before it gets to that point where it's drying. So as I'm wiping these off, you can see that there's way less blotchiness with the gel stain on the maple side. The intensity of the color on the maple side is still kind of meh, but you know, it's at least looks so much better than the penetrating stain, at least in my opinion. And just a quick pan back and forth, just to kind of recap. Moving on to some of the products I use for top coating, Watco Spray Lacquer, I love. This is Odie's Universal Oil, which actually dries as a hard wax. Minwax Polycrylic, Watco Danish Oil in Natural, Wise Owl Furniture Salve, and this is Homestead House Hemp Oil. I'm doing the lacquer first, so just applying some protection here, and unfortunately this first can was almost empty, <laughs> so it's a little spotty here, but you'll see when I do my second coat I have a full can and it goes on a lot smoother than it does here. Odie's oil is applied with these Merca Merlon pads. This is an 800 grit abrasive pad. It's, it is abrasive, but it's extremely fine and it is not absorbent, so the oil doesn't soak into it. It just helps move it around and make everything nice and smooth while you're applying it. So a little of this stuff goes a long way. I'm a huge fan of Odie's oil. I absolutely love it. It's non-toxic, it's food safe, it smells delicious. <laughs> And it goes on kind of like a thick oil, almost like honey, but it dries as a nice hard wax. So it's actually a very effective top coat. And you guys, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen me apply Minwax Polycrylic several times. I love using a foam brush for me that just seems to work the best. The key with polycrylic is not to overwork it. So flood the area, make nice even pulls all in the same direction while it's still wet and you'll have a nice smooth finish. If you overwork it and go back and forth 500 times where it starts to set up and you're still pulling, that's when you're gonna mess up your finish. So all of these top coats that I'm doing, I'm doing just the bare minimum required. So looking at the back of the products, if it says do one coat, but you may do more coats, I'm doing one coat. If it says do two coats, but you may do more, I'm doing two coats. Does that make sense? When I do my scratch test and water test, scuff test, all of that, a month from now, once everything has cured, I want to make sure that I'm testing these at the absolute minimum requirements. So I've already applied the Danish oil. This here is the Wise Owl Furniture Salve. I love this stuff for using in drawers. It has a nice light scent and there's different scents that you can buy. This particular one is white tea. I think lemon verbena is absolutely my favorite. <laughs> and I've I think I've tried them all now. Um, I love the lemon. With the Danish oil and the hemp oil, you have to apply it, let it soak in, and then apply a second coat and then wipe off the excess. Um, there is time frames for that, so just make sure you're reading the can or the bottle. You can see that all of these clear top coats enhance the color of the natural wood, but they don't really change the color. Like for the walnut, for example, it looks darker than it did raw, but this is just the natural color of walnut. I guess what I mean is it's just, it's different than a stain where it really changes the color of the wood. This just enhances what's already there, if that makes sense. Okay, so several hours have passed now. I'm ready for my second coat. This is a full can. You can see the coverage is way better than that first sort of spotty can that I used. 
and once everything's dry I take everything outside there's no substitute for natural light so this is where you're gonna get the best view here so you can see the walnut on the left the maple on the right the different stains these two here are the penetrating stains and they're just, I don't know, they're duller, they're not as rich, I find, as the gel stains are. These were the gel stain panels, walnut on the left, maple on the right. My absolute favorite, this panel right here. If simply top coating the walnut is not an option, gel stain is where it's at for me. So you can see here with the clear top coats, there's not really much color change, but if you notice, especially on that first maple board, you can actually see more of the ribbon and the figure in the maple that you couldn't see before. So these top coats bring out what's already naturally in the wood. Make sure to check back in a month. I'm going to be doing the scratch test and water resistance test on all of these top coats. So you don't want to miss that. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you soon.